Brian Grimes, and on behalf of NTNU, the Dean of the Faculty of Natural Sciences, the Department of Chemical Engineering, it's my pleasure to welcome you all to the second part of the final examination for the PhD degree of Tamal Das, the presentation, critique, and defense of the thesis. Tamal, as I mentioned before, is from Yalbapur, India, and he went to Germany at the Otto von Guericke University in Magdeburg to do his Master of Science degree, where he successfully performed there, and came in 2015 to start his PhD within the Subpro project here at the Department of Chemical Engineering. Uh, he has delivered his thesis, uh, the title of which is Modeling, Estimation, and Control for Optimal Operation of Separation Processes in the Oil and Gas Industry. The supervisor of this thesis has been Professor Johannes Jeschke uh, with Sigurd Skugesta as the co-supervisor. And this is Johannes' first PhD student's defense, so congratulations, Johannes. <laughs> the university has appointed a committee to judge the thesis. The members were introduced in the morning, but I think a repeat and a brief introduction for the benefit of the new members of the audience today. Uh, would be good. Our first opponent and foreign guest today is uh, Professor Zen Yu Young from, all, from the Department of, Material, uh, of Energy Technologies in Oberg University and that's in Denmark. Our second opponent is Dr. Richard Arnson who I've had the pleasure to know for many years and he is a senior engineer at, Shell, at uh, Norske Shell AS here in Norway. And he has much industrial experience and um, with separation processes. And finally, the third and the internal member of the committee is myself, uh, Brian Grimes. Uh, before we allow the candidate to present his work, I'd like to mention that there's a possibility for the audience members to ask any questions after the opponents finish their questioning. So if anybody would like to pose a question, please give me a hint during a break that we'll have after the first opponent's examination, and then I will allow for that and allow you to ask your question. Uh, so, as I mentioned, if this stretches for a long time, we will take this break, and this is where you can uh, ask me the question. So, now we can commence the defense. So we'll start first by giving Tamal a chance to give a short presentation of his work. So please, tomorrow. Thank you, Brian. So uh, this uh, presentation is about my PhD defense, and the topic uh, has been uh, modeling, most, most uh, mostly modeling, and a little bit of optimal operation using those models. So uh, this work has been done with Johannes and uh, Sigurd. Sigurd is missing, but uh, Johannes is here. So uh, the content of my PhD uh, has. Uh, there are eight chapters. The first chapter gives some introduction and motivation to the topic, and chapter eight concludes the, uh, concludes the, the dissertation. Uh, chapter two and three, uh, ch chapter two, three, and four are a work in the former years of my PhD, and chapter five, six, and seven are more recent, and uh, they have been done in the last uh, one year of my PhD. And these are the uh, chapters that I consider the most important contributions from this PhD. So I'm going to discuss more on these uh, chapters, and these are mostly modeling based, and then we derive some conclusions through those models, uh, mostly optimal operation based uh, conclusions or control based con conclusions. Uh, so uh, let me get started with the motivation. When we have a chemical plant, a process plant, we have certain objectives to meet, to run it in a safe manner, the first most important thing. Uh, secondly, it should be uninterrupted. And third is optimal operation. And all these objectives, there are of course other objectives, but in my opinion, these are some of the most uh, visible, most uh, prominent, important uh, objectives that we have as chemical engineers to ensure that chemical plants run properly. But one thing that is most important to meet these objectives is decisions. We actively make decisions on 
daily basis, on hourly basis, on minute basis, on second basis to, to achieve those objectives. These decisions are typically uh, taken by operators that run the plant or by automated controllers which have some automated um, algorithm to, to keep to those objectives. Whether it is operated manually by an operator, here demonstrated by an operator opening a manual valve, or whether it is uh, by an electrical signal through an automatic, automatic control system, uh, it requires uh, process knowledge to either design the automated uh, control system or, uh, or, or being an operator. Both these re things require uh, process knowledge. Process knowledge uh, can be gained through two, of, uh, two options, uh, either doing experiments. Here I have displayed that with a conical flask, some bubbles going out of it, but this not necessarily is demonstrative of a process plant. Uh, and then we have some uh, other option is to develop some mathematical models based on that understanding. Uh, so this part could be to play with the plant a little bit, to play with some of the inputs and see how the outputs are functioning is, uh, is, is what I would call process knowledge. Uh, and then mathematical models could be made out of it and why we need to describe them mathematically because we want to estimate certain variables, objective number one, to develop a control strategy, because when we develop a control strategy, we cannot just go live on the plant itself and just uh, test our control strategy. We need simulators and models to do the first analysis of the control system before we go live on the plant. So simulators and simulators are also necessary for operator training. So that clearly sets the motivation why I went into developing models. And the models are of this type, where you have some inputs and some outputs come out of the model as a result of those inputs. Uh, that was about uh, motivating why I went into modeling, but now I would like to motivate why I looked into separation processes in particular. Subsea separation has been a matter of interest uh, for me and here it is demonstrated with a nice picture where we have some manifolds producing well fluids and then there is a separation system which is connected and we separate certain things and then it is the valuable products which is uh, the oil and gas are transported up for, for sales. To, to make it a bit simpler, I have made a, a different figure just to demonstrate what is happening. Is that we have some well fluids, this is a well and it goes into subsea separation. And uh, subsea separation produces hydrocarbons which are our products. And then we have some water that is being produced, uh, which needs to be discarded. So either it is dumped into the sea, or it is prepared to be made suitable for water injection. Uh, <coughs> in in subsea, uh, why subsea separation is becoming slowly becoming more important. Though live uh, right now, we don't have so many examples of subsea separation. It has been a matter of interest with the oil companies. And the reason is that uh, as the field grows older, there is more and more water being produced and that water cannot be transported up into the top site, which is a waste of infrastructure and waste of uh, oil production. This is, this is a capacity which could be used for oil production. One other thing of importance is that in subsea situations in particular, we don't have sensors that are working amb on ambient conditions they fail on subsea conditions because we don't have the same level of um, same level of understanding of the electronics in in the subsea uh, subsea area. Uh, so they are unreliable. And uh, second, uh, more important thing is that we are dumping water which contains oil, and this oil has to be monitored how much oil we can dump, and because it's uh, degrading our oceans. So with that uh, perspective in mind, I focused on subsea separation as the main topic of my PhD. And in particular, I was interested in creating a separation system of this type 
and this is what uh, this is the separation uh, system sub c separation system that i have studied in this phd thesis and uh, here you can see that the separation goes through a bulk separation phase we have a gravity separator where we remove the hydrocarbons the gas and the oil the water goes further down into the hydrocyclones hydrocyclones then uh, clean the water a little bit to a certain extent beyond which uh, they go into the compact flotation units and there they are cleaned to the the requirement of 30 ppm which is set by the OSPAR community uh, as, a, as a regulation in the European uh, oil production business. So then this water is uh, suitable for uh, water injection and rejection. That being said, even though the limit is set to 30 ppm, we should always strive to clean it even more because whatever the amount, it is always being multiplied by the production and in net terms it is quite higher. But my uh, model development, so in my work I tried to create these uh, small components using mathematical models and try to analyze the system uh, from these mathematical models and creating this uh, system uh, analysis using the entire system put together. Um, but uh, the clear idea that I had in mind is to, uh, to use it for uh, water uh, removal, to maximize the water removal from the system. So that was a clear uh, application in mind and this application is uh, optimization oriented. Um, and one more thing that I was uh, particularly interested in is how well the separation is happening. Which means that I needed to quantify somehow how how is this separation working? How much oil is remaining in the water here? How much water is remaining in the oil here? And the same story for all of these components. So that's where I, I motivated uh, or I developed methods to be able to quantify the separation process in terms of real PPMs. <laughs> because those are the things which are hard to measure in, in, in sub scenario. A general purpose uh, method or equation that I use to develop my uh, models is, is the basic mass balance where rate of mass accumulation is the mass inflow minus mass outflow plus mass gain minus mass loss rate. And this I will use in all my models and when I will present those models I will explain how this uh, method has been used. So the first contribution is in chapter 5 which is the inline de-oiling de hydrocyclone. Hydrocyclone is a very simple device, uh, especially this one, which is inline, which means that it is like a cylindrical pipe where, where a flow comes in and you have a swirling element at the top. This is not a moving equipment, it's just an equipment with some angle in it. And the, uh, taking advantage of that, the flow itself forms into a swirling motion here. What that does, it gives some kind of uh, acceleration towards the radial direction because of cyclonic forces. What that again means is if you have some lighter components in there, they are going to gravitate towards the center because of the density difference. And that's what we see in hydrocyclones and that's the main uh, phenomenon happening in hydrocyclones that oil density is lighter than water and that's why it gravitates towards the center. So if you have an outlet from to closer to the center at the at the, at the outlet, you are going to extract mostly oil, higher percentage of oil compared to the general mass 